thank you so much for the great response to this series that I've embarked on on 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, you know, I can't even begin to express my appreciation for all the emails, for all of the private messages, the YouTube uh, messages, the Facebook response. And it's just, it's really, really gratifying. I hope that you will take advantage of the very special offers of the material. By the way, currently in the process of putting together what, I, what we're calling a resurrection package of all of my books on the resurrection and making you a really fantastic special offer on this package deal to save you a tremendous amount of money and just give you a wealth of information on the resurrection that you're not going to find anywhere else. All right, be looking for that on my website, BibleProphecy.com. All right, well, last week, and we are continuing our examination uh, of Paul's refutation and response to the scoffers at Corinth who were denying the resurrection of the dead ones. Now, I've already shown you, those scoffers were not denying resurrection, period. They were only denying resurrection life to a very specific, very focused group of the dead. Paul is responding to that by pointing out in his modus potens, his if-then form of argumentation, if you, if you deny resurrection life to the dead ones, then Christ is not raised, our preaching is in, is in vain, your faith is also in vain, and the desired response of Paul's argument would be, Paul, no, 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 no. We do not deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We do not deny that or, or claim that your preaching is in vain, and we most assuredly don't believe that our faith is in vain. And Paul says, well, okay, if you don't believe your faith is in vain, if you don't claim that our preaching was in vain, and if you don't deny the resurrection of Jesus, then guess what? You have to believe in the resurrection of the dead ones. And hopefully by this point, the scoffers are going, oh, wow. Wow, Paul, we hadn't really thought about that. Paul's entire point. Now watch. Verse 17. If Christ is not risen... Your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Now, wait a minute. What does the resurrection of the dead ones, of whom Christ is the first fruit, the, and Paul's already set forth the organic unity between Christ, the first fruits out from among the dead ones, and the dead ones themselves? He is the first fruit of the dead ones. If he's the first, then they have to follow. And we'll notice the linguistics of 1 Corinthians 15 later on, proving that's exactly Paul's point. Okay, what is the connection? Why would Paul argue? How could Paul argue? Look, folks, if you deny the resurrection of the dead ones, as we've already said, then Christ is risen, and you're st you are still in your sin. Oh, Paul, no. We believe firmly. We are yet in, uh, we are forgiven. We believe. We are saved. Now, at this juncture, I want you to consider the perfect parallel between Romans 11 and 1 Corinthians 15. Now, by the way, this parallel has been noted by scholar after scholar after scholar. It's not a, quote, preterist invention. We as preterists have pointed out the implications of being consistent with that parallel, but it's not new to say Romans 11 and 1 Corinthians 15 are parallel. Well, what's going on in Romans 11? The Gentiles were boasting themselves against Israel, saying Israel had already been cut off. Israel had no future. Israel had no hope. But Paul says, no, 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 wait a minute. 
You guys don't get it. If the casting off of Israel is the riches of the world, what will their being accepted in be except life from the dead? Okay, wait a minute. What are the scoffers in Romans 11 denying? That the Gentiles have life from the dead. What are the scoffers in 1 Corinthians 15 denying? They are denying that those who died before Jesus have life from the dead. Same identical situation. Now, go back to my question. What does the forgiveness of the sin of sin on the part of the scoffers have to do with whether or not the dead ones are raised? Well, once again, Romans 11 helps us out tremendously on this. Now watch this. In Romans chapter 11, Paul speaks again to the Gentiles, put that in quotation marks, and says, do not boast yourself against the root. Who's the root? Well, in reality, it's Abraham, but it's also Israel. Now watch what he says. The root supports you. You do not support the root, i.e. Abraham and Israel. The root, i.e. Abraham and Israel, supports you. In other words, your salvation is dependent upon Abraham and Israel receiving their promises. What was their promise? Life from the dead. So Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is arguing forcefully, powerfully, logically, compellingly. If you deny the resurrection of the dead ones, of whom Christ is the first fruit, and his resurrection is the foundation of your faith, then you are denying your own salvation. You see, the scoffers at Corinth were almost undoubtedly Gentile scoffers, just like in Romans 11, claiming that Israel had been cut off. Israel's promises had failed. God was through with Israel. And you know the tragedy here? Modern amillennialists, modern postmillennialists, at least in many regards, take the same position today, although it's much later down the road, and they say that God was through with Israel at the cross. God had cut off Israel at the cross, thus taking the very position of the scoffers in 1 Corinthians 15. All millennialists, God was through with Israel at the cross. Israel was done. Her last days were over. Scoffers at Corinth, God is through with Israel. Israel's hopes are gone. We are the participants of salvation, not Israel. And Paul says, no, no, no. If the dead ones are not raised, of whom Christ is the first fruit, your faith, your salvation is in vain. You are still in your sin. Because you see, salvation is of the Jews, according to Jesus. And according to Paul, guess what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, then to the Greeks. It was necessary that the gospel would be preached to Israel, but since Israel counted themselves unworthy of eternal life, God would turn to the Gentiles. Acts 13. You see, folks, it's absolutely critical to understand the force, the power, and the logic of Paul's logic. It's overwhelming once we see what he's actually arguing. He is not arguing against people who deny, quote, resurrection. He is denying, resur he is arguing with those who deny resurrection, i.e., who deny salvation to those who died before Jesus, i.e., Old Covenant Israel. And folks, we've got a whole lot more on this 
You don't want to miss it. So we'll see you on the flip side.